Flying bricks. Russia cannot cope with Ukrainian kamikaze drones. Russia can't stop Ukraine's light aircraft style kamikaze drone. He is a brick flying with a bomb on board. In recent weeks, Ukraine has relied on unusual weapons to launch strikes deep into Russian territory, according to a business insider story. We are talking about a small, unmanned aerial vehicle filled with explosives. Visually, it resembles some variants of the Cessna propeller-driven aircraft. Light aircraft converted into drones first began attacking Russia in the spring. They fly at low altitudes and travel much slower than long-range missiles, but these UAVs have proven the ability to evade air defense systems and fly hundreds of kilometers to their target. Experts say the planes highlight the success of Ukraine's innovative long-range drone program, which Kiev has used to attack Russian military and energy installations. In early April, Kiev used a modified aircraft to strike a drone factory in Tatarstan. This plane costs less than $90,000 per unit and can fly at speeds of up to 20 km per hour. Its interior is filled with explosives. Last week, a plane similar to an A-22 struck an oil refinery in the Republic of Bashkortostan. The kamikaze plane freely passed Russian air defense and hit the target. University of Oslo researcher and security expert Fabian Goffman wrote that, in the world of missile systems, an airplane is essentially a flying brick. But while the aircraft may appear crudely but together, it is still quite a complex weapon system as the airframe and engine still need to be combined with explosives and targeting technology. It operates at a relatively low altitude, making it difficult for radar to track. If Ukraine manages to find a corridor without adequate air cover, the drone could effectively penetrate right through Russian territory, Hoffman said. Additionally, given its design, the aircraft could also be mistaken for a civil aircraft rather than a threat. However, this does not really justify Russia's apparent failure to shoot them down. During the attacks on Tatarstan and Bashkortostan, the plane managed to fly hundreds of kilometers across Russian territory for several hours without being shot down by Russia's vaunted air defense systems. These drones are noisy and slow, making them vulnerable even visually if radar doesn't pick them up. Hoffman said these planes should be relatively easy to intercept by placing air defenses such as anti-aircraft guns around critical infrastructure. Ultimately, he said the fact that these drones are slipping through shows that Russia has a capacity problem with assets tied to either battlefield defense or protecting key population centers such as Moscow and St. Petersburg. Russia may also be underestimating the Ukrainian threat. U.S. needs to learn from Ukraine in using unmanned systems, Senator Tom Brewer. The U.S. Army has a lot to learn from the Ukrainian military in using unmanned systems, given the experience that the Ukrainian armed forces have gained since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion. Nebraska State Senator Tom Brewer, a retired U.S. Army colonel with extensive combat experience, said this in an interview with Ukraine Form. The problem is that the Americans don't understand drone warfare. We need to learn it from you. We need advisors over here that are hearing, seeing things and making notes so that we don't have Americans die because they don't know what to do. Brewer said, according to the politician, technology has changed the battlefield. It's done so even in the last six months. A year ago, we were pretty proud of the fact we're giving them M1 tanks and things like that. But now we realize that an M1 tank really isn't worth a whole lot on the battlefield because of the drones. And if you take the cost of an M1 tank and you give that to Ukrainian drones, that would be much more valuable. Brewer said he expressed interest in Ukraine's Army of Drones project and emphasized the importance of the effective use of unmanned systems on the battlefield in Ukraine and for hitting targets on the territory of the aggressor country. At the same time, the Nebraska senator thinks that any warnings against attacks on Russian oil refineries are groundless. I find it disturbing that the U.S. is upset about the fuel depots or the refineries that Ukraine is hitting. If you can find it, destroy it. Do it. You may hear rumblings that the United States isn't happy with that because it could affect oil prices ahead of the elections. But this is about winning a war. It should not be about fuel prices. If the whole world has to pay more, in the end, the war is successful and Russia is defeated. Then I think that's the price the world pays. But we shouldn't restrict or put handcuffs on Ukraine. They have the ability, knowledge and understanding how to win the war. They just don't have the tools. Brewer said, all of Ukraine's partners should follow the example of the United Kingdom that allowed the use of its weapons provided in military aid packages against any legitimate military targets on Russian territory, the politician said. Because that's the bottom line. You win the war and you do whatever you got to do. Russia is not hesitating to shoot anywhere they want in Ukraine. Why should Ukraine hesitate, he said. 